welcome back to the Passion Pit. This is where we spotlight the leaders in indie theater, on stage and on film. Greetings all you movers and shakers and indie makers. This is Jay Michaels. Today we're speaking to Kat Parker, the artistic director of Articulate Theater Company, and the most ambitious project of their lineup, The Art of the Protest. Cat and crew are building a series of works dealing with topical and powerful issues facing the world today. That's what fostered the indie theater movement of the 60s to begin with. You'll hear more from Cat herself in just a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor. Would you like more people to attend your show? At Oplod, we combine artificial intelligence and human intuition to expand your audience and increase ticket sales. For a limited time, we'll help you fill your seats free of charge to prove our value. That's right, we will promote your show at no cost if you begin right away. Sound good? For more information, email promote at oplod.com. Hello. Cat Parker. Jay Michael. If I'm on the line, you're on the air. <laughs> well, I I love being on the air. So so I'm told. So I'm told. <laughs> A pleasure to speak to you. I have been following your show for for as long as I have been permitted and it looks like it's going to be amazing. You have you have a cross section of indie theater. Uh, quality entertainment, uh, people, plays, directors, you, you have some of the best going on there and, and you are to be commended for two reasons. One, this is a huge project. Oh my goodness. You're, you're going to need a nap when this is done. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. And, and, and secondly, uh, so many, so many people are, are Monday morning quarterbacks. They, oh, we don't like the government and, and we don't like what's going on with women and we don't like, and they sit in their chairs and they say, this is terrible. And then they'll just click like a lot on Facebook or something like that. You're doing something about it. You, the art of the protest. You are, you are basically, you're basically creating change, uh, via the stage. Uh, please uh, tell, tell us all about it. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for that and for, for noticing that. We certainly strive for um, a quality show, and we like to do things that are relevant. Articulate is an ensemble, so we, we like to do things in a big way. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, this series, this Articulate in the Arts, was uh, uh, originally created so that we as theater artists could look at how other artists do what they do and let that inform what we do. And just given what's in the zeitgeist right now, uh, looking at the imagery that comes out of protest and um, the artwork from all around the world and, and throughout the years, it just seemed like a no-brainer to put that imagery together with how so many of us are feeling right now. And yet we didn't want to start, we didn't want to stop with a, um, you know, no, no Trump kind of a night. I'm trying to put that as diplomatically as possible. It's, it's yeah. not about focusing on one individual. It's about focusing on and continuing the conversation about these issues. And playwrights um, already have such the, the gift for bringing words together and telling things from a, uh, a personal standpoint, from an individual standpoint, that putting them together with these uh, amazing imagery that that uh, visual artists have created just is such a perfect match and and then you know obviously I'm biased but I think that my my uh, artists the team behind articulate are just amazing and so what they're doing I've been going to rehearsals all week and checking in on all the different shows to see what's going on and you know again I'm biased but I I I think it's just wonderful. I think it's the, the strongest show that we've put out in um, uh, since we've been doing these articulating the arts. Strongest show, period. I, I was looking at uh, the people involved, and I wasn't blowing smoke when 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 I said you have you have the cross section of of quality. You have names on there that I've seen for years that are that have always made an impact, and now they're all coming together. Geez, it's it's like the Avengers 
uh, suddenly started a theater group. Uh, Articulate it, Avengers unite! <laughs> I I come to the epiphany now also in listening to you. I uh, of course I saw it on on all the materials, but it just suddenly dawned on me. Not only are you uni- uniting uh, uh, artists in in all these causes, you're uniting art. You so many times we you know we're in a do it yourself world. Everyone thinks they can do it themselves because they'll just download the program somewhere. But you are you are taking actual artists. And, and bringing their work even further to life. So, so you're connecting two different art worlds, which is really wonderful. Um, how have those, how have the artists felt about, uh, about their imagery suddenly, suddenly being breathing? Well, I will, I will tell you a story and, and it's a story that you're connected to. Um, you suggested at one point, you know, you said, uh, you should, I wonder why people do this. And so uh, we had a little bet, I think, and uh, on my <laughs> team, I asked them to write in and say, uh, and tell me, why are you doing this project? And uh, one of our uh, playwrights wrote in uh, in response and said, when I saw this image and I saw this opportunity that Articulate was providing, I just, my heart just like burst out of my chest with the opportunity to say something about this and, and put these two things together. And she said it as only playwrights can in such an evocative way that I took that and I emailed it to the, to the artist that created that image. And she wrote back and she was just floored oh, at great. how these words um, had been elicited from her imagery and, and the, the circle went around. So now these two artists have been in a virtual conversation and we're going to get the benefit of both of them uh, uh, sitting in the audience and having all that impact. So, I mean, that story alone shows you just how this connection and, and we as an ensemble of theater artists, we're, we're actors, we're directors, we're producers, we're designers. We're all riffing off of all of that. Um, and learning how that image is created and why, why Pia Guerrero would create the eeny, meeny, miny, mo imagery then tells me as a director something about my own craft. And that then flows out to the actors and they learn about their craft. And then that all meets in the air between us and the audience. And hopefully then audiences walk out and go, I never thought of that issue from that viewpoint. That's amazing. Oh, and that's then they great. go and continue the conversation at, at a nearby bar because there's always a nearby bar. Duh. <laughs> there has yes. to be. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I think that goes back to the days of Shakespeare, you know, oh, come, let us go to the tavern. Um, it's, it, I'm listening to you say this and I realize that, uh, that you've even, you've even created a new kind of educational discipline here because, you know, when, when we study, uh, when we study theater, when we study fine art, when we study everything in school, it comes from one point of view. You're, you're, you're essentially handing us a totally different point of view. How many times would a playwright be able to speak to a fine artist? about about the message within their works and how many time could a could have and, and as you just said how many time will a painter a, a, a designer an artist a fine artist have have a, a a theater artist a lively artist turn to them and say this is what it evokes in me uh you, you're essentially creating another educational discipline as well which is marvelous um now you're saying all these plays all these things uh, how is it to run it all together how is how is it to to keep the 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 ship in in one direction <laughs> I don't know how I have any hair left. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if you see me next, I'll be wearing a wig. There you uh, go. No, it's a, it, it is a lot of uh, plate spinning. Uh, I have that on my desktop, a, a little image of, of this woman spinning all these plates on top of sticks, because that's what it is. Um, but it's it's also at the bottom of it, it's just such a – I mean, I'm – I am first and foremost a director, and I really love that. I took over being a producer out of a necessity, as we all know in indie theater, that we are we we create our own opportunities. And yet, I've really grown to love this this job as a producer, in that where I'm getting my my joy is that I I see these other artists um, take off. When I go to a rehearsal. And I watch a director interact with an actor and I, and they say something to each other that makes this little um, bubble of, Oh yeah, happen. That just warms the cockles of my heart, as they say. 
Um, so, so dealing with it administratively is, of course, a pile of work. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I I get recharged by seeing that and, and of course I do have uh, as an ensemble I have a team of people around that uh, that do a great deal to help me especially my managing director Brittany Venable who has been with me since uh, well we won't talk about how old we are <laughs> the, the Mesozoic era <laughs> but, yeah uh, I remember it well yes <laughs> exactly but uh, you know there's people that step in and then my uh, uh, set designer George Allison who also happens to be my my partner, we make beautiful sets together, as I say. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they're all right there with me, um, challenging me, pushing me, giving me new ideas, and then supporting me in the ideas that we uh, that we agree on all together. So it's a team effort, but, um, uh, yeah, my hair is uh, is paying the price. <laughs> Do you find, and, and, and uh, one thinks the answer is obvious, but but it, it, your elaboration is what what I I want to hear. Do you find that the real payoff for a producer? Okay, yes, the show should make millions. That's very nice. A producer will be happy. But do you think the the payoff in 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 a producer's soul is is exactly what you had said? Seeing the work come together, seeing the magic suddenly happen, and knowing that 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 you're the parent of these two brilliant children coming together and making this this world. Do you think that's a good pay? Do you think that's a, a, a proper payoff for a producer to to see this amazing work that they've fostered? It, it's one half of the payoff. You know, the as, as in as a director when you're casting, you you are marrying collaborators. Right. And so for me as a producer, it's just an extension of that that I'm marrying these these artists together to to see a, to put together. And working with an ensemble means that I can say to somebody you know, you're really great in these roles and you've got that down. Let's try looking at you in this role and strengthen you and, and widen your horizons and, and get you to do something else. And then getting the right um, director for that piece and put, mm. you know, putting the puzzle pieces together is just a glorious fun for me. Um, the second half as a producer is getting people to come see this. Oh, yeah. um, I, I've been reaching out to, it, it, it's, it's, you know, as you well, as we all well know, it's very frustrating to try to get people um, who are in the position to hire others to come see these types of shows, especially when there's only four performances. But I've told people, <clears throat> this is 10 different playwrights, 10 different directors, 10 different casts. There is at least one voice in that night, in that two hour period, that you're going to want to take home with you. And if you're in a position to mm-hmm. hire somebody, then you should be there and see them. And so then, so, so we've done these, uh, this is our fifth one. And in the past, when I get an email from an actor or a director that says, um, oh my God, I just got a call from so-and-so and they want me to come in and audition for this part because they saw me in the articulating the arts, then my little heart just goes pitter pat because that's the <laughs> other half is, is, springboarding people um, to the future. Now, you know, if they would just reach back and bring me with them, that would be even better. But <laughs> Well, they, they <laughs> should, they should all write a check at some point or another, yes. <laughs> I like that idea, from, from your lips to God's ears. There you go. <laughs> so so these these are plays that didn't exist until the, the playwright saw, saw the artwork. Uh, so this is, this is right. truly organic right out of the, the visceral moment of that. Um, right. Uh, how can I put this? What's the difference? Is there a difference? Uh, have you seen a, a unique quality within these plays that you may not have normally seen when someone has their own idea, when they sit down and, and figure it out and do their readings and whatever else? Do you, do you feel something different, a different kind of electricity from something, uh, th- uh that, that started from a, a, a piece of artwork? <clears throat> I think um, the the thing that makes it unique, the, the part that ties it together is the theme. And I've, I've heard from playwrights over and over that they generally don't like theme festival things because it feels like somebody's trying to shoehorn them into, you know, um, I will only want plays with uh, shows that, with things that happen on Thursdays during a blue moon. You know, it's <laughs> just too constricting. But what they tell me, at least the ones that they give me the feedback, is that um, because it's a unifying theme and, and it's that, that um, educational aspect that you talked about, I, not that I'm trying to, to teach anybody um, their, their craft, but, but it, the, 
the fact that it's an elaboration of a conversation from another artist uh, and all on a centralized theme that then I, as the um, producer, kind of wrap, well, well, really as the artistic director of the night, we try to put it all together. It's not a bunch of individual shows that have no relationship to each other. There's a ribbon that goes through them. You know, our wonderful sound de- designers have created this this moment in the trans- transitions are normally, you know, a little bit of music, a little bit of blue light, things go sure. around. But in ours, it's going to be um, snippets of newsreels from, you know, years back and radio wow. things and uh, stuff like that that leads into these issues. So the, the, the transition feeds into this next play. And so maybe the play doesn't even overtly smash you on the head with an issue, but you're going to know leading into it what what the theme was in the playwright's head as they go into it. So so there is this ribbon of, of continuity of the theme that flows through the evening that kind of ties it all up in a nice little bow. So so you're uh, you're also giving your audience a chance once once they go to that bar to uh, to discuss it, uh, they might blink and suddenly say, wait a minute, that that first play dealt with this, and then it went right into the second play. So what it's saying is, so you're you're you're, you're creating a, again a, a a major amount of conversation afterwards. You're 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 really introducing people to to the world through art when you really I, get I down sure to it. I sure hope so. I, I mean we. We we got you know over a hundred plays, and we tend to to not gravitate towards ones that are very heavy handed or of singular focus. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the plays that that either the the uh, characters argue both sides of the issue, or the answer is maybe even a little ambiguous. Um, and so there's something for everyone in the night. There's there's different issues covered, and there's different viewpoints and perspective on on issues. And, um, and so what somebody comes away from it, uh, there's also, of course, different kinds. There's comedies, there's dramas, there's, there's two um, very uh, movement-based pieces. And, and you have to orchestrate the flow of the night so that people get palate cleansers here and there. So it's not all heavy, you know, hitting over the head. And so that you you go together. I had a conversation with our sound designer the other night and talking about the uh, the sound pieces and protest in my head was sort of, serious and um, uh, you know, provocative kind of sounds. But in her head, it was also a combination of joy of having gone to protest and having people huh. um, riffing off of that energy that they get from each other and and taking that energy in a positive step and moving forward. And that's what we want the, the, uh, the audience to go out the door with is thoughtful um, investigation of the issues and the energy and the positivity enough to to perhaps go forward and do something about it. So, so this is your your subliminal, if not subversive, way of of showing an audience. Okay, you can't be the Monday morning quarterback. Look at what's going on in the world. Please stand up and and join us in your own way. You're you're yes. You're you're creating a uh, the the battle plan. That's really excellent. That it it um I, I gather you've been doing this a long time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We won't get into the, the, the digits, but but definitely theater overall, and theater here in New York, and uh, and then uh, articulate is uh, we're in our seventh year. But um, I worked before at T Schreiber Studio with the uh, the Austin Terry Schreiber, uh, who really kind of brought home the uh, the value of uh, an ensemble. And then uh, one of my mentors is uh, Marshall Mason from Circle uh, Rep. Huh. <clears throat> and so, you know, that is just the crux of the ensemble um, energy in the world. I, so I, I I've asked learned that, from the best. I've asked that question, um, uh, not to get any numbers, because Lord knows you'll say a number and I'll go, oh, I remember it. And then we both, you know, that's it for both of us. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> when uh, I I just finished a, a thesis paper on the off off Broadway movement and your your entire thought process of bringing together different disciplines and creating this this work that is is so timely and so necessary for an audience to hear that's the whole notion of the original off off Broadway movement right there that was the point it was the call to action don't just go see the ice capades it's a call to action um uh, having done this enough time to to look back uh how has independent theater changed 
is it still that combative? Is it still that, that powerful, that, that, that bloody, if you will? Uh, how, how's, how's the 21st century independent theater as opposed to what you might have remember? I think, uh, this is an amazing question because it's really something that's on my mind lately. Um, I am uh, attending a, a course, the CTI, Commercial Theaters Institute, which is mm. about producing producers and is very Broadway centric. Sure. But my background is all in this indie theater. And as you well know, many years ago, the NYIT people got together and started bringing us together as a community. And they, they um, commissioned that uh, uh, economic research that showed the city people just how much money we bring to this city, how much of an economic impact we have on this city. Right. And then the League of Independent Theater got together and became a political advocacy group. And now they they're starting to tighten the community down too. I think that this is a time for a sea change for independent theater. Uh, and so we're no longer the the off off Broadway. We're not about in relationship to Broadway, but we are still part of the commercial theater in this um, city. And how can we help those people on Broadway? Again, as I was saying earlier, it's like the commercial theater producers, they need to be paying attention to what we're doing because we are their farm team. We know where all the talent is. We are where um, playwrights are getting their, their, their first shows out. That's where they're getting their encouragement. That's, this is where actors are dipping their, their toes in. And then you also have those seasoned actors who are coming back to the independent theater because this is where the meat uh, shows are because we don't have to uh, cater as much to a commercial budget. So this, uh, you know, I'll say it again, I'm biased, but I think that we are where art lives and we are the ones who are the closest in touch with our community. We're not, you know, we're not living upstate somewhere. We're living in Brooklyn. We're living in Queens. We're living next to the people who are impacted by these issues that we talk about in uh, the art of protest. We we are the ones who know that we have some power and some privilege to do something about it, to bring their true. voices to be heard. That is terrific. That's exactly right. I completely agree with you. I think uh I think the voices are starting to be heard. There's a production of Oklahoma now that's on Broadway that mm-hmm. uh that that had its humble beginnings in indie art. And there's so many other pieces, even in independent films, there seem to be, you know, creeping slowly into the Academy Awards. So I think uh, I think people are starting to turn around and say, "Hey, wait a minute! Where did this brilliant thing come from?" Oh, there it is. And and they we should... we use a, a fair amount of video. We we're not in this show, but we have used video often in our past shows. And I think that independent theater and independent film are starting to become more closely intertwined because we can afford it, and because we're the the risk takers who will who aren't afraid to go and do something with your iPhone and and make it. Uh, a piece of art that we can then use on the stage. There are film so, festivals that, that deal with, you know, camera phones, uh, you know, submit your best camera phone film. And when I, when I see this, I'm like, that's, there you go. Indie film is now really indie film. Um, the, the shelter, um, the shelter theater company also has their own uh, film festival. So the, the lines are really kind of breaking down and that's for the best. I think. That's terrific. That is Absolutely marvelous. Now, now you mentioned about Articulate having done uh, uh, works with film and things like that. Tell me about Articulate and tell me about what happens after this show. Okay, it's done. The whole world applauds and, and you make money and, <laughs> and everybody goes off to, to bigger and better things. You get a major nap and then you wake up. And, and what's, what's next? Tell us about Articulate and tell us about what we can look for after, after the protest is over. Well, we are very uh, proud that we have just been invited to join the theater consortium at the West End Theater up on uh, 86th and Broadway. Oh, great. Uh, that's where Prospect Theater and uh, a couple of other theater groups that uh, his name escaped me. I'm so sorry to you guys, my, my new neighbors. Um, we'll be working together in that space, which we're very excited about. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and it was, <clears throat> and it was apropos, if you know the space at all, it's kind of a, what was a gothic uh, chapel right. at some point, because our next uh, play is a new riff on uh, Frankenstein. <gasps> it's not, it's not an adaptation, it's a riff, because this is a story, the real Dr. Frankenstein, 
and how his life, his legacy, his career was destroyed by Mary Shelley, the 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 uh, original uh, public shaming, <laughs> as it were. Is this your idea, or or is this based on any kind of reality? Uh, both, both. The, <laughs> the writer has uh, has woven his own. Uh, uh, takes on things, but there's uh, there's very definitely um, ties to the reality of the time frame oh and the people gosh. who were involved. You know, that is. Fin- I'm I'm uh, you had me with Frankenstein. I'm I'm a horror movie lover <laughs> of of the first oh, order. Good, good, good. So, oh my gosh, that sounds well, wonderful. You'll have to be involved. I would love it. I would love it. When when are you looking to do that? Uh, well, we move into the space November. So I think it's the following week that we would open. Um, you're, you're catching me out on the dates here, but uh, but we will certainly, obviously, I, you know, we have uh, a website, articulatetheater.com, where people can sign up for the uh, uh, the news blast, which will tell them when that's coming in. Uh, we're very much looking forward to that, and it will certainly have uh, video components uh, because. Hello. I think I lost. Do you like video games? Do you like to read? All right, guys, I know that uh, those two things usually don't go so well together, but my new book, The Minds Behind the Games, Interviews with Cult and Classic Video Game Developers, is kind of like an ESPN 30 for 30 collection of interviews with some of the coolest creators in video game history. We're talking iconic games, Deus Ex, Mortal Kombat, Wasteland, NBA Jam, not so iconic, E.T., Night Trap, indie games, Pro Wrestling X, Towerfall. If you love video games, you will love my book. If you know nothing about video games and want to get in the know, read my book. It's available wherever fine books are sold, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart, and of course, my site, PatrickHickeyJr.com. It's an awesome book. I had a ton of fun writing it. And simply put, if you want to get in the know and you want to find out stuff that's not even on Wikipedia, check it out. You won't regret it. Well, I guess that idea blew the sauce off AT and T. I I I guess AT and T doesn't <laughs> want you telling the story of Frankenstein. <laughs> they mustn't know. They mustn't know. That's great. Well, I'm 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 glad I'm glad I I had that downtime because that's where I'll put in my commercial. But but uh, anyway, so so your opening, uh, so your adaptation of this, your your riff, if you will, uh, would happen mid November. Correct. Yes. Cool. And tell us the website again, so we can go there and and bask in all your glory. Aw, thanks. Um, <laughs> it's www.articulatetheater, with an R-E at the end of theater, mm-hmm. articulatetheater.com. It's funny, as I now hear the name, I come to the next epiphany. You are articulate, me, or articulate means means to, to speak well or to speak intelligently. And it starts with A-R-T, so essentially your company is creating the conversations <laughs> uh, on yeah. art. You are articulating uh, fine art. Um, That's very, very smart of you. Yeah, the full <laughs> name of the, of the event is Articulating the Arts. Uh, and then this one's called the art of protest, um, and uh, and articulate um, has several other meanings too. It also architects know it from how you articulate a space through physical means, and, um, and we're very big on production values, light and set and sound, and so we like to articulate a space as we're articulating a story. Wow. Okay. Well, there I've just learned something. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll have to tell my classes that have a new meaning for the word articulate, or not a new meaning, but a different meaning of it. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for all of this. I, I can't wait for the show. I can't wait to, to see this, this all-star group come together and, and literally change the world. Uh, Kat, well, thank we you so much. You see it. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Glad to be there. Uh, uh, great talking to you. Thank you so much. Best of luck with everything, and 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 I can't wait to spread the word to everybody about your. Uh, uh, I won't even call it a production. I'm going to call it about a, a, a new way of thinking. 
Oh, thanks. I, yes, I appreciate that a lot. It is, it is an event. It very definitely is an event. There you and, go. Uh, and we hope people really love it. And uh, we're looking forward to getting uh, a lot of people in there to experience it. So thanks Most so definitely. much for sharing the word. Anytime. Anytime. Terrific. Thank Take you very care. much. Ciao. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you, Kat. That was terrific. Passion Pit is looking for further sponsors. Right now we're thrilled with Mind Behind the Games and Applaud. If you have something you want to tell the theatrical community, we're the place to do it. On our next installment, I cornered Reverend Mary's all-man band. Two towering tuners, Mario Claudio and George Dixon. And they'll, uh, they'll sing out about what they're singing about. See you then.